Well, hello and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson we're going to discuss gas evolution reactions. Now, gas evolution reactions are a subtype of double displacement or double replacement reactions. So if you haven't yet watched that lesson on double displacement reactions, I suggest you check that out first. Now, as we saw, double displacement reactions have this general format where you have two ionic compounds and they're just swapping out anions to create new partnerships. Well, we saw in that lesson how to use solubility rules to predict if a product would be soluble or aqueous or insoluble, which means solid. Well, sometimes one of these products can also be a gas. Well, there are only really four types of products you need to worry about in terms of forming a gas. The first product to look for is H2S. So if one of your two products that's formed is H2S, it won't be aqueous or solid, it'll actually be a gas. The next product to look out for is carbonic acid. Well, carbonic acid is not really H2CO3. In fact, it's actually water with carbon dioxide dissolved in it. So if one of your products in a double displacement reaction comes out to be H2CO3, we're actually going to remove H2CO3 and replace it with water and carbon dioxide. A third gaseous product to look for is sulfurous acid. So if you swap your partners out in your double displacement reaction and one of your products is H2SO3, that's actually sulfur dioxide gas dissolved in water. So you will erase sulfurous acid and replace it with water plus sulfur dioxide gas. And the fourth and final product to watch out for is ammonium hydroxide. So if you produce ammonium hydroxide, you can replace that with water and ammonia gas. So here's how this works. Calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid, so you would normally just swap the anions. So you'd put calcium with chloride to make calcium chloride and hydrogen with carbonate to make carbonic acid. But now we learned that carbonic acid is in fact water with carbon dioxide dissolved in it. So instead of writing H2CO3, we will just remove that and replace it with H2O liquid plus CO2 gas. Here's another example. Magnesium sulfite reacts with hydrochloric acid. So again, we would normally swap the sulfite and the chloride to make magnesium chloride, our first product, and hydrogen with sulfite would make sulfurous acid. But again, we just learned that if you see sulfurous acid, that's actually sulfur dioxide dissolved in water. So we would just remove that and replace it with this. So let me just show you a few examples of this. Lithium carbonate reacts with nitrous acid. So lithium carbonate, well lithium is Li plus carbonate CO3 two negative. So if I make lithium carbonate, it must be Li2CO3. And we know from our solubility rules that all lithium containing compounds are soluble, are aqueous. And again, if you don't have a copy of the solubility rules handy, you can download the PDF summary of those at getchemistryhelp.com in the resources section. So lithium carbonate reacts with nitrous acid. So nitrous must have come from nitrite. So nitrite is NO2 negative. If it's an acid, it's combined with H+. So nitrous acid must be HNO2. And it's an acid, so aqueous. Well, what would our products be? So lithium is now going to combine with nitrite. So lithium nitrite would be LiNO2. And that's aqueous because all lithium compounds are aqueous. And hydrogen will combine with carbonate to make H2CO3. And all acids we know are generally aqueous. So I'd write aqueous. Aha, but remember we just learned that this is not actually carbonic acid. It's really carbon dioxide and water. But I'll give you one little tip. It's generally better to balance the reaction first and then break up any of these gaseous products. So let's go ahead and balance it. So two lithiums on the left one lithium on the right, so let's make that two lithiums. Now that makes two nitrites, so this needs to have two nitrites. Well now that's two hydrogens. Oh, we already have two hydrogens and one carbonate and one carbonate. Okay, so that's balanced. So now I'm gonna mark this out, or if I had an eraser, I'd erase it, but put H2O 
liquid, and carbon dioxide gas. And since the reaction was already balanced with H2CO3, I know it's still going to be balanced with H2O and CO2 because both of these have two hydrogens, one carbon, and three total oxygens. How about number two? Sodium sulfite and hydronitric acid. Well, sodium sulfite, so sodium is Na plus. Sulfite is SO3 two negative. So that would make Na2SO3. And you know from your solubility rules, if you have them there nearby, that all sodium containing compounds are soluble, so aqueous. Plus hydronitric acid. Well, we know from naming acids that hydroic comes from ide, so nitride would have been the anion. Nitride is just N3 negative. If I combine that with H+, the acid must be H3N and aqueous. Well, here again, we just swap our anion, so sodium now goes with nitride, so that would be Na3N. Again, all sodium-containing compounds are soluble. And then hydrogen with sulfite would be H2SO3. Ah, but again, we now know that H2SO3 is actually a gas forming product. But first we'll balance it and then we'll break it up. So once again, two sodiums on the reactant side, three sodiums on the products. We need to make two and three the same. The easiest way to do that is just to find the lowest common multiple of those. So Least common multiple of two and three is six, so let's make two into six by multiplying by three, and three into six by multiplying by two. Well, now that made three sulfites on the reactants, so we need three sulfites on the products. How about hydrogen? Well, now we've got six hydrogens on the products, so we need six hydrogens on the reactants. And now nitrides, two nitrides, and two nitrides. Okay, so that reaction is balanced. Well, now that we know it's balanced, now is the time to go ahead and break that up. So every H2SO3 is really water and sulfur dioxide gas. So three of those would be three waters, liquid, and three sulfur dioxide gas. And again, this will still be balanced because it was balanced with the H2SO3, so it'll still be balanced with the water and the SO2. Okay, one more quick example. Ammonium sulfide. Ammonium is NH4 positive. Sulfide is S2 negative. So ammonium sulfide, we would need two ammoniums to balance out that sulfide. All ammoniums are soluble, so aqueous. Plus phosphoric acid. Well, we know ic acid comes from eight, so phosphate, PO4, three negative, and it's an acid, so combine it with H plus. So it must be H3PO4 and aqueous because it's an acid. Well, once again, we'll swap our partners. So ammonium will go with phosphate. So what would ammonium phosphate be? Well, ammonium's positive, phosphate's three negative. So I'll need three ammoniums to balance out the one phosphate. And all ammoniums are soluble, so aqueous. Hydrogen with sulfide would be hydrogen sulfide. Aha, we saw that this is one of the gaseous products. Now this one though doesn't break up to form a gas. It itself is a gas. This is actually the gas that's the source of that rotten egg kind of sulfury smell. You might have smelled it if you've ever been around like a hot springs or a geyser or something. Okay, last step. Let's go ahead and balance it. So two ammoniums on the reactants, three ammoniums on the products. Again, the easiest way to make two and three the same or balanced is to find the least common multiple. So it would be six. So to turn two ammoniums into six, we multiply by three. And to turn three into six, we multiply by two. Well, now I've got three sulfides also. So I need three sulfides on the product. Now that makes six hydrogens. So I need to make this six hydrogens. So multiply by two. Now I got two phosphates. Oh, and I've already got two phosphates on the products. So that one's balanced. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick lesson on gas evolution reactions. As always, be sure and click below on the subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new video lessons are posted. And we'll see you back here next time at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.